I'm the hunting of. I always feel like there's someone watching me or following me. I've opened myself to that world and now I just can't get away from it. I'm hoping that I can figure out why these ghosts try to contact me. I feel death all around this place. I feel like I'm in a time war. You ever have a bad experience and you just don't want to go back to that place? Yeah, this was that place. Betrayal, jealousy, murder. Did you just see that shadow? Now I really have the goosebumps. This man is not able to move on. You open the portal for him to tell you his story. I don't think this is over yet. My name is Kim Russo, and I am a psychic medium. When I was nine, I was visited by the first of many dead people who wanted to communicate with the living through me. Realizing that I couldn't ignore my abilities, I chose to embrace them. Many people are haunted by traumatic paranormal events buried in their past. Some of these people have faces you might recognize. You've heard about their paranormal experiences. Now you are about to witness the moment they take me back to the place of the haunted in the hopes of uncovering the truth. This is the haunting of Audrina Patridge. I'm in Chicago, and I'm headed over to meet with Audrina Patridge. She's best known for her role in the popular MTV show, The Hills. And she's also currently hosting her own TV show called First Look. Audrina called me here because there was something supernatural that happened to her. And she wants to go back and try to reconnect with this spirit that she felt was trying to communicate with her. Audrina claims that she's had experiences pretty much all her life. And if that be the case, it's as if two mediums are walking into this pub. I am here in Chicago, and I am headed back to Fado. I was there filming my show First Look, and I made a connection with a ghost. It was just so heavy and sad. Ever since I was a child, I've always had this crazy connection with the spirit world. When I was in high school, I kind of started getting into ghost hunting, and that's when I had my first evil experience and encounter, and I just feel like I've opened myself to that world, and now I just can't get away from it. But this specific experience here in Chicago at Fado took it to a whole nother level. So I'm in Chicago for my show First Look, and we are about to go on a ghost tour. The tour guide is very quirky. She knows everything about Chicago, all the deaths that have happened, everything about the mafia, you name it. And she takes people on these tours that are obsessed with ghosts. We had these ghost detectors, an EMF detector that detects energy around you, and dowsing rods. We go to three different locations. The last one we end up at is called Fado. It's one of the oldest bars in Chicago. It's an Irish pub. And as soon as we walk in, it reminds me of an old country saloon from back in the day. And the woman who led us on this tour, she actually informed us there's a lot of history that's went on there and lots of dark stories. 
And she starts telling me, there's a jealous prostitute, and she haunts this place. Apparently, there's this bathroom on the second level. And when girls go in there to do their makeup, use the restroom, she'll appear behind them in the mirror. And she shoves them into walls just to spook them. And I wanted to know more information, like, who is this jealous prostitute? I want to know more. And she said, well, let's find out. As soon as you start going up these stairs, the energy changes and it gets heavier. OK, we're walking into some thick air right now. Like some stuff went down up here. So I am terrified to go into that bathroom. For my show, the producers did not want to go into the bathroom with me. They wanted it to be as real and raw as it could get. So it's just me and the camera, and that's it. I walked in kind of slow, and it's dark. It's eerie. And knowing that I might get shoved into a wall by a ghost terrifies me. I had an EMF detector, which immediately starts detecting energy. And I walk up to the mirror, and I'm standing there staring at myself. And I was holding dowsing rods, trying not to shake. And I ask, is there anyone in here with me? Cross the rods if, if the answer is yes. And they slowly cross. This is my first time ever using dowsing rods, and I did not think they were going to work. So when they did, my heart starts, literally, my heart wants to jump out of my chest. So then I'm like, OK, there's someone in here with me. Is she going to jump out of the stall and push me into the wall? My mind is just running. And I ask, are you a female? Cross the rods if it's yes. And they don't cross, they stay straight. Now I'm really getting freaked out because it's not the jealous prostitute, it was something else. This doesn't feel right, like I don't think we're supposed to be here. So then I ask, Are you male? Cross the rods. If the answer is yes. And they cross where they flick back and hit my shoulders. It was in the room. It was next to me. I could feel it. And I was terrified. It was so scary. I feel they're communicating with me. I feel energy around me. I was scared to death. And I ran out of that bathroom as quick as I could. I kind of think that I was communicating with this man, and he was trying to open up or tell me something. Since that night, it has never left my mind. There's spirits that roam the earth all around us, and some people are able to connect and some are not. I just feel like I have this energy that just pulls ghosts to me. I would love to know why are they drawn to me? Why do I always feel it? I don't know what it is, but I attract ghosts. I really don't know what to expect. I know the feeling I had when I left, it was a really strong feeling, like it kept pulling me back. No, I'm kind of scared, and I just don't want to put myself in a position where I'm opening myself up to danger. I'm feeling very hesitant about going back and opening Pandora's box. It's what it feels like to me. I see a man. He seems to have some sort of wealth attached to him. He's wearing a suit, 
navy blue. It's as if he's waiting for someone. I could tell this man's nervous and anxious and angry. But I keep hearing, good time, Charlie. Good time, Charlie. Um, I have a feeling Audrina's grandfather's with us. And he keeps saying the name Thomas, Thomas. I, I think it's his son. I can't swear to it, though. And uh, Thomas is lucky to be alive, he just said. Thomas is lucky to be alive. As I'm trying to tune into Audrina, I feel that people in her life might take her for granted and try to take advantage of a kind nature. Some people have that personality where they are the constant ear for people. And I think this may be a problem. I feel there's a sense of innocence to her that needs to be addressed today. Here it is. <sighs> I hope I can help her. This is a really old building. I feel like I'm in a time warp. I'm going back in time. I keep seeing the bartender, typical with his apron, his handlebar mustache. And I see him looking out of the corner of his eyes. And I see a stage and I see a, a man and a woman singing. I think maybe there was a little shady business or mob relations. And I see, I see people are running, people are taking cover. They don't know what's going on. I feel death all around this place. It, it's pandemonium. <laughs> Something happened to change the energy in this bar. <laughs> people are running, people are t taking cover. They don't know what's going on. I feel death all around this place. I've had a lot of paranormal experiences. It's not just here. And I could not understand why. So I'm hoping that Kim can help me figure out if there's a connection here or why these ghosts try to contact me and speak to me. I, I really don't know. I want to know the connection here. I'm really getting nervous now. Whew. There it goes. Oh. Hi, Audrina. Nice to meet you. So nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. I hug. feel like I should give you a hug. Yeah. Yeah, I had quite the experience here. Did, last were you time. working here? And we were doing a travel yeah. show, and we did a ghost tour, and this was one of the stops. So we oh. had dowsing rods and an EMF detector. Wait, wait, wait. Is this notably haunted based on the tour? Yeah. Okay, well, don't believe everything you hear. Okay. A lot of old tales, and it's like a game of telephone, start to get told mm -hmm. about certain haunted locations. Yeah. So you were, you were told some things? A couple different stories yeah. about this place. Yeah. That's why I don't want to know okay. what is being said, because I don't want anything to taint what I pick up. OK. I already have the goosebumps. Me too. <laughs> I felt this innocence about you that you're eager to learn and you're, you're, you're excited, almost like a little kid. Like sometimes they pull out the Ouija board. Oh gosh, yeah, I've never done that, but I, I understand. I, I have to tell you, dowsing rods are no different. Than Ouija boards. Very similar. Mm. 
Very similar. You're calling in spirits. And is that something, when you do that, are you letting them into your world where they can follow you? Yes. And if you, t if you told them specifically, like, when I leave here, do not follow me, would they listen? When you talk to people in your, da in your daily life, does everybody listen? No. Same thing. Like, I, I know you're curious, but what is it that you want to get out of today? What, what, what are you looking for? I feel like ever since I was a child, I feel like I've had connections and I felt things and like I wanted to figure out if there's a connection here or why these ghosts try to contact me and speak to me. Okay, all right. So, well, I am a human detector <laughs> for spirits and I will certainly tell you everything I'm already yeah. feeling before you got here. I, um, I felt like I was in a time warp. I, I went back to the turn of the century in my, in my mind. Uh, there's this man that is so powerful and he's so dominant. And I just want to give you a little bit of a warning. He keeps looking at his watch like he's waiting, but not where he's anxious and he's pacing. It's more like he's waiting for a plan of attack. Uh, That's what I feel. Huh. And I, I see a bartender with these handlebar mustaches, like, like an old time saloon. That's funny you say that, because when I first walked into this place, the last time I was here, I totally felt like it, it was an old country western movie in the saloon. and. The different rooms upstairs where dirty business went on, and... I said that. Yeah. Now I'm really curious to see what happens when we go in there together. Do you want to you wanna go? You want to... No time like the present. Let's do it. All right. Okay. I'm ready. All right. Let's go. Okay. How does it's, it feel? It's beautiful. I just, I feel like down here, it's very lively and, but upstairs is where I was. Yeah, this is too crowded. We have to, why don't we go upstairs? Okay. So this is where we filmed when I was here last. We were mostly up here and back in that corner. Let's go over there. Okay. I think this was a stage, as a matter of fact. Now, it's used for tables and seating right now. Mm hmm But this is the stage I saw from outside with the lady singing. And she was a regular here. Um, and this was a neighborhood place, but I feel like there was, there was... Something happened to change the energy in this bar at one time. Something terrible happened in this bar. It's just the energy, like, it just makes me want to cringe. Did you just see that shadow? I know who's there. This was a neighborhood place, but I feel like there was, there was... Something happened to change the energy in this bar at one time. Something terrible happened in this bar. There was an event that happened that after that, nobody really looked at this bar the same. Mm -hmm. And it, it almost is as, as if it was off limits. You ever have a bad experience and you just don't want to go back to that place? Yeah. This was that place. It's for a lot, a of, lot people. of people. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just so you know, I don't only connect to whatever is in this space that possibly is trapped, but I'm able to connect to your loved ones, possibly your relatives, your friends, your family. 
I believe your grandpa's coming through. On your mom's side, mm -hmm. he's actually been waiting for you. So he's been watching you from the spirit world. Thomas. He keeps yeah. saying the name Thomas. Does he have Tom, a My Tom? uncle Tom. Is that it's his son, my mom's brother. I thought it was his son. I said that in the car. Yeah. He told me in the car that Tom should have been dead. He had you know, a close call with something. He did. He had, um, something was wrong with his neck and they had to do spine surgery. Wow. And the surgery was going to be really bad, but he actually recovered from it really quick. OK. Tom's remarried? Yeah. He has a daughter from the first wife? Mm-hmm. Is her name Lisa? Leah. I'll take it. Yeah. Pretty close. Oh, my gosh. He said there's um, friction there. There's a lot of friction there. Just with just, Leah and my uncle. Yes. Yeah. He knows all of you, although I don't think he was alive when everybody was born. Yeah, we didn't know him very well. He came back into my mom's life, gosh, when we were like 14. And he babysat us. And I don't want to be too personal, but he's coming through a little bit remorseful. And he really does love his family. My mom never really told me much. He left when my mom was like a little girl. And this is what why he's showing up. Let me see what's over on that side. Okay. I, I, I could swear I just, I feel, do you feel anything up here? Like, does it feel the same as when you were here? I just feel like it's hard to breathe, kind of. That's very common for when spirit energy is around. They envelop your heart chakra. Some people get headaches. Other people get chest pains, like they feel anxiety. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. Can I ask you a question? I was getting the sense that you are that person that neutralizes energy, meaning you're the buffer. Mm -hmm. I feel that you don't take sides, but I see each party coming to you, dumping their problems on you. Yeah, I'm kind of the peacemaker a lot. I felt that in your family, though, I felt. Mm -hmm. And even with your friends. Yeah, I'm like the therapist. <laughs> I knew it. Yeah. I knew it. But who do you go to when you need to get advice and to, to vent? I usually go to my sister or my aunt. Now, don't say another word. OK. I just heard a name. Is it Connie? Yes. That's what he just said. Aunt Connie. <laughs> and she's very spiritual. She is very. We do Bible study and go to church. She's very wise mm -hmm. and grounded. Yes. They told me about her. And it's interesting that my grandpa Bob came through because I was at the mall one time and this woman came up to me who was a psychic and said I had energy. And she brought up my grandpa Bob and she just told me out of nowhere that he was my guardian angel, that he was always watching me. And, and I'm validating that today. Mm -hmm. It's his way of making amends for leaving yeah. and, and the way he just said not doing the right thing by my family. Mm -hmm. Now, I know he came back and he tried to make it all good and, and everything like that. And passed away. Yeah. Exactly. He didn't, have a, he didn't have a lot of time to see everything through. Mm -hmm. This all has something to do with what you experienced, and it ties into your story somehow. Wow. Pieces are starting to fit. Mm -hmm. When I was outside, I was being drawn all the way up. There was a lot of business up there that nobody knew about. I have to tell you, I don't know what this is, but, but I feel death all around this place. He's still very angry. This man is not able to move on.
when I was outside, I was being drawn all the way up. There was a, there was a lot of business up there that nobody knew about. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you, I don't know what this is, but, but I feel death all around this place. Um, I want to go upstairs. I feel pulled up there. OK. Let's go upstairs. I have, like, the goosebumps in my, like, my hair is standing on my neck. This is very creepy. Go ahead. Oh, boy. Look at this like place. storage now. I was kind of expecting an office or something. Yeah, you know, I do feel that at one time this was very different. But I still feel that it, it was an open space. There's, there's an energy in, the, in a corner over there. Um, just tell me if you see anything or sense anything, because I, I know. I something like right here. I know you're I know. sensitive. What, right like, next I to you? I just feel all on this side of my body and my neck. It just feels like, I don't know, it's just the energy. Like, it just makes me want to cringe. That's that guy, that powerful guy. The guy with the watch. He's waiting for something to go down. So I wonder what he's waiting for. Well, I see that lady who was on the stage. She's wearing a corset like the, the women used to in the old days. She's stunningly beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful woman. Somehow I have a feeling that she has something to do with this powerful man. Did you just see that shadow? By the, do you see why that? I see the man. You do? I know he's there. I know he's there. That woman, the beautiful, beautiful one, mm -hmm. there's this, there's, she's sneaking up here with the bartender. I see her going like this. Shh. And I see her going like this to him. The man with the handlebar mustache. Uh-huh. So they come up here. They come up here. Mm -hmm. That angry guy, he's waiting, and he, everything is churning, and he's angry, and he's waiting for something to go down. Mm -hmm. He's waiting for them, knowing. I think he's connected to the woman. As a matter of fact, they might even be married. Oh, the angry guy and the woman. So he knows so that he's waiting to catch them. You're on the same page, sister. That's what I'm getting. He is waiting to catch them in the act. I thought maybe there would be like a, some kind of illegal activity that he was trying to wait for to go down, but. And I feel like he reached for a gun. I feel either murder or suicide. I feel that he's still very angry. I think there's a little bit more to this story. This man is not able to move on. This is it? This is it. <sighs> still hard for me to breathe. But even though this is the ladies' room, there was a man in here with you. He was in a jealous rage. Okay. 
he's still very angry. Betrayal, jealousy, sadness. This man is not able to move on. I feel that they're coming together for some kind of closure. You know what your grandpa just told me? What? He said, remember, Kim, what she told you. She's always the peacemaker. Mm-hmm. That's you. Mm-hmm. So even unknowingly, you came back here, and you're somewhat stuck in the crossfire of this, coupled with the fact that you have heightened psychic abilities. So you were chosen. I don't want to say too much until I go into that bathroom mm -hmm. with you. Whatever happened in the bathroom, I think is going to put closure to what this is up here. That's my hope. Let's get out of here. Yeah, let's get out of here. So, this is it? This is it. This is the bathroom. It's still hard for me to breathe from up in that attic. Yeah. This is where it happened? Yeah. What the tour guide had told me is that there is a ghost in the woman's bathroom, and she's a jealous prostitute. And when girls are washing their hands or doing their makeup, she'll appear behind them and scare them or shove them into walls. OK. I do feel there were prostitutes here. Mm -hmm. But that's not what I'm sensing that you encountered. OK. What happened in this room? So I was standing here holding the dowsing rods. And this is where I asked the three questions. One was, is there someone in here with me? Cross the rods. If it's yes, and it slowly crossed. And then I said, are you female? Cross if yes. And it didn't cross. It stayed forward. And then I said, are you male? Cross if yes. And it flicked back. It was in the room. It was next to me. I could feel it. And then I got spooked, and I just ran out. You walked out because I, you got I just frightened? Spooked. It frightened me. Mm -hmm. um. I, I have to tell you, Audrina, that even though this is the ladies' room, there was a man in here with you. And it was that man. And I just realized who, his name. What is that? That's what I kept hearing in the car. His name is Charles. Charles. But they called him Good Time Charlie. Good Time Charlie. I was hearing that in the car. Good Time Charlie, Good Time Charlie. That was his nickname. Mm hmm Because whenever patrons came here, he had a lot of money. He was a very generous man. He gave people things that they needed. He gave people money as loans. Mm -hmm. At the core, I feel Charlie was a good guy. But then he's so angry. Mm hmm He was in a jealous rage with his wife. She turned heads wherever she went, and Charlie was proud to have her. But Charlie, he didn't treat her right. He, Love he her. loved her, but I think he tried to buy her love with lavishing her with really, you know, beautiful things and items and jewelry and furs and all of that. And the only thing he didn't give her is what the bartender did give her. And it was <laughs> love, Connection. compassion, mm -hmm. understanding. Mm -hmm. It was. Charlie, he felt shame, and I feel like he felt he had so much pride that she chose him over me? That guy? It was an ego. Bartender? It's all ego. Yeah. Wait a minute. She's telling me the story. Oh, my gosh. Hmm. 
and he killed her. You opened the portal for him to tell you his story. I think there might be a couple of more angles to this. Telling me the story. And he killed her. Was it in here? She said, in front of everyone. I hear music playing, everybody's having a good time. The singing, the sounds of men's voices laughing. All of a sudden, she's telling me he shot me in cold blood. I hear the gunshot, mm -hmm. and then it, it's pandemonium. People are running, people are t taking cover, they don't know what's going on. And then all, I just see her laying on the floor, people surrounding her. People running, and there's just a pool of blood coming right out of the side, side of her head. I feel she's come back today to give him redemption. To forgive him? Yeah. To allow him to free himself. And I'm sorry, Tag, you're it. But you opened the portal for him to tell you his story. And is it because he just trusted me, or they saw something because I'm the peacemaker, so they thought they could use? I picked up that energy about you in the car, mm -hmm. and I felt that you don't like any disharmony. I felt that if you can give a helping hand, you will. Mm -hmm. This is no different. He felt your energy. He, th he thought I could help them move on from this. Mm-hmm. OK. I think there might be a couple of more angles to this. Do you want to go sit down and talk about it? I just want to be able to leave here with closure and know why I was drawn back, which is definitely starting to make sense now. So let's let's go find a quiet spot okay. if, if we can. Yeah. If there is Hopefully. one. Hopefully. <laughs> All right. So I think the mystery is almost solved. <laughs> yeah, almost. Uh, yeah. The way that I see this whole thing is you came in this place and you gave Charlie an opening to tell his story because she did die and he was convicted. And now they're both here and they can't get past it. There's some kind of connection and now I know I was brought here to help because that's what I'm good at, is peacemaking and helping other people. You're that ultimate therapist. Mm -hmm. I don't want to leave a very big point out of this. I have to say, I don't think this is over yet. I feel that we need to have Charlie and this woman have a conversation. I want you to do the work at this point because you were the target, not me. How do we do that? Everything that connects, connects through the mind with psychic ability. I just don't know how to tap into it or use it the right way. In your mind or out loud, call Charlie here and tell him she's here. Close your eyes. I guess I'm trying, I need to stop stopping myself and just let it happen. I feel like he's over here. I'm listening. I feel like he's over here, and she's behind me. OK. And he's apologizing. He feels it's really sad and heavy, and he feels remorseful. Is he talking to her, or is he talking to you? I feel like he's just looking at her. 
okay? Like, they're talk he's talking through his eyes. I know you probably think you're making this up. I do. But you're not. I'm not. No. Every blooming medium thinks that. Do you feel they're talking amongst each other? I do. I feel like there's closure being made and that she's saying that she loves him. OK. But she has to go and leave this, and she wants him to be free. So she's giving him permission to finally move forward. Yes. I think they're good. I'm it's feeling good. it, too. Those souls picked you because you can do this. Mm -hmm. It's settled. Yeah. Was that real right now? Did I just make that How up? How did you feel about it? I mean, I, I feel like crazy for saying that, but I really felt it. Your heart will never lie to you. <laughs> and we both can't be crazy. No. <laughs> All right, let's drink to that. <laughs> Cheers. I really didn't know what to expect tonight. Kim helped walk me through it and kind of taught me how to use my head and my gut and my heart. I just felt like there was a lot of unresolved questions and I wanted answers. And I really think that Kim helped me get those tonight and helped me tap into my own abilities. I'm putting it out there. I do feel these connections and um, people might think you're crazy, but you can't help how you feel. And I'm gonna leave tonight with a sense of closure. Looking back, Audrina was hoping to reconnect with the spirit of a man she encountered in a historic pub in Chicago. Together we discovered that Audrina has been questioning her obvious psychic abilities her whole life. Audrina's abilities allowed her to make a real connection with the spirit of a man with regret, as well as the woman he killed who had yet to forgive him. Audrina was able to accept and use her psychic abilities to help them move on from their pain. We all have this gift, just at different levels. And it's a gift that can be used to help our friends, our families, and even strangers find peace.